What's up guys, it's Ryantium here, and today we are back once again in Stellaris Console Edition with the Lockin Mechanists. So this is episode 3 of our kind of campaign that we've got going on here, and it is the year 2230. We've got a whopping plus 60 energy, plus 101 minerals, minus 2 food, minus 11 consumer goods, plus 17 alloys, plus 1 whole strategic resource. Look at us, we're rich. Plus 3 influence because of our uh, research agreements, commercial packs, and defensive packs. Uh, plus 24 unity, plus 202 research, which is eh, not too bad. Uh, we're not very far over our Empire Sprawl. 26 total systems with 4 planets, as well as 65 pops, 3 star bases, and almost half of our naval capacity taken. So in the last episode, we did actually make first contact with the lovely Mandasura Galactic Hierarchy, uh, who ended up not really liking us all that much. Luckily, we were able to become rivals with them uh, and make us, you know, uh, some... Good lord, that, that car was a... I don't even know what the hell that was. <laughs> uh, we were able to make uh, them rivals and giving us a little extra influence every month. But then we found our lovely friends, the Babaki uh, League, and they are fanatic egalitarians, but they are xenophobes. So that's kind of bad. But at the same time, we were able to secure a uh, research pact with them, a defensive pact with them, as well as, um, I believe, a commercial pact, right? Yeah, we have a commercial pact with them too, which is really, really great. So we're making our nations richer, and we are also protecting each other's interests. Now, speaking of our interests... Today might be the first day that we go to war, uh, and the reason I say that is because last episode, when we found the Babaki League, we found that they were blocking off the Mandasura Galactic Hierarchy from expanding up there. Then we colonized Evagamar. This system right here is a choke point that denies the Mandasura Galactic Hierarchy from expanding down here. We also, oh, excuse me, we also got the Zorakan Black Hole. The thing is, though, if we go to war. We need to go to war to claim this system, this system, this system, this system, and this system. Technically, we could get away with claiming this system and um, uh, and this system. We could only claim those two systems, and we'd be fine. But in the in the th um, what's the word that I'm looking for in the the grand scale or in the grand theme of everything, I don't want a whole bunch of different borders everywhere, uh, especially with our cohesion. Because we're only five away from uh, losing a bunch of cohesion and making our empire sprawl higher than it needs to be. So, this might be where we go to war. Let's see how much it would cost to claim these systems. It's probably going to be fairly inexpensive. Yeah, 32, 48, 32. So then we've got... So it costs like 32 to 50 influence each. Uh, okay, so I know why it actually costs that much. This system out here is probably going to cost a decent bit. Let's let's actually remove these three claims. How much would this cost? 64, this one, 48, and so on and so forth. So yeah, we'll probably take all four, five, six systems whenever we can. So what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, we're actually going to go ahead and claim all of these systems right here. If I can, yep, we'll just claim all of those right there. I know that's a lot of influence just taken out. Uh, but now we have claims on this section right here, which means we would be able to deny them from expanding anywhere up here. That's the most important part. In fact, we don't even need to take these two systems. Why would I take those two systems in the first place? We don't even need those. We really only needed... We really only needed that system. Why did I claim all of those systems? Don't I just feel silly? Uh, yeah, we didn't really need to take all of those systems. We just needed to take that one. Okay, so that's okay. That'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, so we'll go ahead and grab those systems eventually when we go to war with them. Uh, and what's great is if we do indeed declare war on the Galactic Hierarchy, uh, the uh, we might be able to invite our friends. But why can't we? Why can't we invite our friends? We have a defensive pact with them. Um, has a defensive pact with the Lock-in Mechanists. What exactly does that mean? Break our defensive pact with this empire? No, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, maybe once I go to war, uh, it will happen. I'm not sure. But let's go ahead and start the game up, shall we? And we'll see how this goes. They probably really don't like us now because of our... Yeah, no, they're very hostile. All right, so what we're going to be focusing on today, it's less expansion, chaotic. more um, construction of ships. Because the more ships we have, the better off we'll be. Uh, so let's continue to outfit the fleets, and we'll be good to go on that front. 
That way we can continue and we can actually, you know, go up against the bad people. Alright, so we have a new colony right there. Another energy, please, because we are still leeching a little bit of energy. And then, looks like we've also got access to cold fusion power. Wonderful. Now, I could have gone for the uh, the better hyperdrives, but at the moment, I think I'm okay. Now, hopefully, we can get uh, this system under wraps as soon as possible, because being able to, you know, block them off from uh, going out here would be very good. It would be very, very good to do that. Uh, let's see, what is our ships look, or what are our ships looking like right now? Anomaly detected. 1908, <clears throat> as far as our fleet power goes. Uh, so we've got level 3 lasers, level 2 coil guns, level 2 power, level 1 hyperdrive, so on and so forth. But we've got level 3 defenses. That's a positive. Alright, what do we have down here? Oh, perfect, we have our southern point right here. Nice. So while we're um, sticking with the theme of not expanding, but instead bulking up our navy, we'll go ahead and have them go through there, do all of that stuff, and then what we'll do is we'll have you start building all of this stuff out in space, because if we can go ahead and start to lock down all of this stuff too... Oh, I don't have enough. Oh, good lord. I'm so poor! <laughs> I'm so poor! Uh, there is another planet that we can colonize right down here. And we should eventually, because it's an okay food world, which is really great. But now that we're positive on food, we don't necessarily need to be worried about that right now. New technology discovered. And there's some new tech. That is the Starhold. Perfect. Now, we're going to go and un upgrade the weather control systems, because more housing is not necessarily a bad thing. Especially when we're talking about other planets. Uh, <laughs> good lord, the amenities... Uh, this is really, really bad. <laughs> we really need amenities on that planet. Alright, but everything else is doing well. That works for me. Alright, so something that's kind of sucky that just popped up is the fact that we have access to a couple of different upgrades for our ships right here in the form of our X-ray lasers. The problem is they take rare crystals. We don't have access to rare crystals at the moment. Not to mention these. Do they cost anything? No. Doesn't look like it. So we can at least get up to level 3 railguns without having to use any of our strategic resources. But that means that the, the next spot on a planet that opens up is going to have to be the synthetic crystal plants. And I'm hoping it's not on the on the uh, the capital planet because we need amenities. The next building on this planet has to be a hollow theater. Because honestly when that happens we'll be able to pump out even more resources because the stability will actually rise. Because we won't be denying our people the amenities of life. Uh, but it'll probably end up being this planet right here. Both of these planets both have two more pops to go. Which one's growing faster, that is? That's 4.19. That's 4.36. Oh, shit. It's gonna be the, it's gonna be the capital. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, I'll figure it out. We'll, we'll put down the hollow theaters and then we'll, <laughs> we'll go from there. Because I need, I need amenities on that damn planet. You know, I found dark matter, that's totally fine, but I still don't have the technology to exploit gases or rare crystals. Not to mention, we don't even see any rare crystals in space. I had this happen to me one time when I was in a multiplayer game. I did not find any, any strategic resources for like the first, I don't know, maybe 30 years? It was really bad, honestly. Really, really, really bad. Alright, so he's going to be building all of that stuff. We're saving up our influence and our um, alloys as well. And honestly, we're doing okay. We're, we're doing okay. We could do better on research, but at the same time, I think we're I think we're going to be fine. Uh, Derelict Shipyard, nice. The more research we can get in space, the better. Ah, uh, what, uh, what you doing out here, buddy? What you doing? Are you building... Are you building stuff, or are you... You're going that system. You're, you're going to start expanding over there, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to war very, very, very soon, my friends. Cruisers, let's unlock that just in case. Alright, and let's uh, go ahead and come here. That's what we want. We want at least level 3 across the board. How much is that going to cost to upgrade? Where exactly? Oh, it's down here. How much does that cost? 383. Perfect. That's a damn bargain, if you ask me. Uh, but we do actually need to go ahead and sell about a thousand of those. Pick up some more uh, of our consumer goods. And then let's see. We are in harmony. This lowers the amenity uh, usage by 10%. Please, please, please tell me that's going to give me a little bit more stability. Yes, okay, just a tad. Nothing too crazy. 
All right, got subspace, subspace sensors, hyperlane breach points, please. And we can go ahead and have him do that, even though it's challenging. Yeah, that's what I thought. They're going to start expanding out to this way. Um, okay. So that's okay. We just need to make sure that, um, that they won't be able to get through our space again. Damn, there it is. <laughs> I mean, we can claim that one, too. <laughs> it's only going to cost 48. Yeah, sure, fuck it. Because <laughs> now that kind of defeats the whole purpose. Um, but let's see. They're still equivalent with our military power, which does make me feel a bit nervous about going to war with them. And of course, okay, I'm going to keep my word. It has to be the Hollow Theaters. It's got to be the Hollow Theaters. We need amenities on that damn planet. Maybe this is a lost cause. Wait, why? Maybe this is a lost cause. Wait a second. I wonder if this even connects to anything out here. Because this is the edge of the galaxy right here. There's a big possibility that this actually would not even matter to our empire. And we could just let them take it. Because they could be blocked in. Fleet upgrades applied. Hmm... I need to be able to see what's out there, honestly. What's our other fleet look like? Uh, we've got... So that's 33 out of 30 because of our, two, our three little frigates. This one is 10 corvettes and 10 destroyers. If I wanted to reinforce, it would cost 4742. Good lord, all of the people with the crappy Hondas are out today. I do apologize about my lovely outside uh, sound quality. Um, hmm. The other thing that we could do <clears throat> is... Oh, wait, can, I can see their fleet. They got a 1.4k fleet there. Wait, is that their only fleet? There's no way. <clears throat> There's no way that's their only fleet. They've got destroyers. 14 corvettes and 8 destroyers. There's no way that's their only fleet. System charted. Hmm. Because, see, the problem is... Okay, I have an idea. I do have, actually have an idea. Um... It will help to maintain our space, even if we have to surrender. So here's what's going to happen. This one, we're going to upgrade that. And this one down here, we're going to upgrade this one as well. Now, the reason I'm going to upgrade both of these to the Star Holds is because they don't have access to the Star, to the star Hold technology. And if they do, they uh, haven't upgraded any of their bases yet. The good thing about this is even if we... Oh, hello. Even if we have to surrender... Oh, there's a yeah, curator thing out here. Even if we have to surrender because their fleet actually overwhelms us, uh, we'll have the Zorakan black hole to fall back on, and it will be filled with the, the strike craft, and we'll have a way to kind of repel their fleet uh, while we repair our own fleet. So I'm kind of thinking of a backup plan. What I want to find out is if they actually have anything else. Uh, one, two. One, two. So we can see all the way up to there. I, just, I wonder if this is a lost cause right here. I mean, yeah, it would be nice to have all this space right here uh, and block them out for good. Because then they wouldn't really have anywhere else to go. At the same time, is it worth it? I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out, though. Um, okay. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's worth a shot. So let's go ahead and move our fleet into position. Because it's going to take how long to get there? 377 days. So it'll take about a year, a little over a year to get there. System charted. Uh, antimatter, please. Ooh, a League Science Base. Hello. Let's go ahead and pause and we'll have them study that. Uh, research project, please. Thank you. And then we'll have you survey, and then survey, and then survey. Perfect. Hmm. Because now my, now my brain is moving and I'm trying to think about what the hell to do. There's another planet there that we need to colonize. Hmm. I guess we'll find out. We're moving the troops anyways. Uh, we should probably go ahead and... Oh, you know what? We don't even need to build troops right now because we're not going after any planets. But we'll find out. Truthfully, once this ship jumps in, we should be able to find out what's up here. I think. I think that's how that's going to work. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not sure. Alright, but the economy's looking good. What do we have here? Uh, this is perfect. I need synthetic crystals. Please give me synthetic crystals. Right there. That will give me plus two synthetic crystals. That'll be fine. And then we'll build another mining thing right there. That will satisfy both of those. Yeah, that's perfect. That's totally fine with me. <clears throat> Alright, the fleet should be moving into position here uh, soon-ish. 
Oh, no, they're right there. <laughs> Never mind. All right, so we've got 30 ships. They're all Corvettes, and they're all nicely specced out. So the reason it says he might be equivalent to me is he either has another fleet somewhere up here at the capital. I bet you they're just kind of right out of our range. This might be their kind of dummy fleet that they've got. However, if this is their only fleet that they have, they aren't really in the best position. Hello, curators. Will you boost our research, please? Uh, 2,000? Yes, please. Thank you. Research project concluded. Uh, the other reason why I think it's probably their main fleet is because they're still reinforcing it. But then again, it could just be a long shot. We'll see. Discovered. We shall see. Uh, refit standards, please. That will work. Because once I get crystals going and gases going, um, I can and moats too, for that matter, uh, we'll be good to go. Oh, it's so exciting! We're gonna go to war, <laughs> and I can't save scum. So if I if this if this war goes goes badly, then shit's gonna hit the fan real real fast. Ooh, there's a le there's a size ten Gaia world right there. Hello there, beautiful. Oh, look at that! What do we have here? <clears throat> size twenty two ocean, size seventeen tropical. It's a nice little arm that goes down there. Not to mention all this space down here is connected. This would be a nice choke point, and then that would be a great choke point, and you would have access to all of this space. That would be really nice. That might be kind of our future expansion plan. Good lord. Sell Just all of this food, it. please. We have too much. And another 500. Thank you. I know it's it's a ton of waste having to just continue to buy these things. All right, we're going to wait until this pop grows. System and then we're going to put down a civilian industries. That should stop the loss of our uh, consumer goods. A decent bit, I should say. All right, they're in position. Let's go to war. Let's not waste any time, shall we? Uh, actually, scratch that. Wait, how long do we have for these upgrades? Okay, 160 days. That's fine. Uh, let's go to war. Let's first, before we go to war, claim this system out here. Yep, that should work. We've got enough influence to claim other systems, too. And you know what? Sure. How much does that cost? Yeah, that's fine. Alright, <clears throat> let's go to war. Contacts, Mandasura, declare war. Conquer. Anomaly detected. And declare war. Let's see what happens, guys. Uh, what is their war goal, exactly? Uh, conquer. What systems do they want, I wonder? <clears throat> we'll see what systems they want. Um, and then we'll see how pertinent it is to win this war. <laughs> uh, how do I tell which ones they have conquered? I can't see what, um... Okay, they've probably cut they've probably claimed these three systems so it's not like we lose anything crazy we would lose the nice space station right there but that's about it I think all right think happy thoughts people think happy thoughts <clears throat> uh, we need to take out their fleet as soon as possible let's see are they gonna move their fleet all right where is their fleet going to move is my question Merging with blossoming, blossoming beyond Armada. Moving to the Manda system. What did I tell you? There was a second fleet. Engaging what did I tell station. you, my friends? There was a second fleet. <laughs> oh, no. This was either going to be the shortest run through, or we're going to have a fruitful future. And I don't foresee that happening. All right, we'll see how big this fleet is that we're about to face. Can't be too 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 big. Construction online. All right, but good. There's this. That's what I wanted to see. More hangar bays, and let's do something even more. Black hole observatory. No. Target uplink computer. That's ship weapons range. Yes, please. Because if we can get corvettes with another fifty percent weapon range, that's going to be amazing. Hostile All right. Fleet within range. Yes. Okay. Let's see how big this thing is. Um, and then same thing down here. We'll put in a target uplink computer just in case. How big are you, my friends? 2.4. Okay. Uh, we're technically bigger, but they should be pow more powerful than us. Uh, the reason I say that is because they have 9 destroyers and 29 corvettes. Okay. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's actually... Wait, where are you at? Uh, can we jump you back in time? Maybe. Maybe. It's possible. Because if we can jump them into this system, this station already outweighs them. 
in fleet power. And this might be one of the systems that they want, in fact. Alright, they're continuing to move, it would seem. They're moving to the Zorakan Black Hole System. That's what we want to see. <clears throat> That's what we want to see. Anomaly detected. Because now our fleet is at full strength, we'll be in our space, and this hangar bay should be done in 80 days. Now, it depends on how long it's going to take them to get here. Alright, what are they working with as far as technology goes? They have point defense for missiles, they've got blue lasers... So there, I mean, they're a decent bit behind me. What else do they have? They've got blue and red lasers. What the hell is going on with these guys? Uh. All right, so we'll see what happens. Are you guys moving to the? They're moving to the Unix system. Where is the Unix system? Uh, that's a very good question, Ryan. Oh, who are you down here? Oh, for fuck's sake! You're kidding me. There's an empire right beneath me. They're mammalians. <laughs> oh no. Oh gosh. Uh, this could catch us out of position. And if anybody down here is evil, we can kiss our butts goodbye. Um, where is the Uncar system? I don't, uh... I don't see where that's at. Damn. Okay, well they're no longer moving to... Oh, well, they aren't. They're moving to the Zorakan Black Hole system. That's perfect. Come to me, my friends. Come to me. Fight my 3.9 thousand bastion, please. Alright, more society research. Ship fire rate would be great. It won't be done by the time they get here, though. Yeah, that's fine. That one's, that one's perfect. Where research are they coming from? Concluded. Which part of space are they coming from? Ooh, this could be great. This could be wonderful for us. Come on. Come on, you dicks. Get your booties in here. Are you kidding me? Now they're moving to the Unardia system. Fuck you guys! Okay, but at least we have that to fall back on. That's fine. This right here, uh, civilian industries, please. I need that. Alright. Uh, but now, we know that their fleet is weaker than ours as far as fleet power goes, but we don't know... I'm gonna go ahead and say that we would technically lose this fight, but we'll see. Come on, turn around, fight me. You know you want to fight me. Diplomatic connection established. We've met the state of Hifness. <laughs> Great. Fuck everything about this game. Uh, they are fanatic materialists. That's wonderful. But they are slaving despots. <laughs> of course. How big are they? Oh, they're about the same size as me. Are they more powerful than me? Uh, no, they're inferior. Now, this is not a bad thing. They do like us because we're uh, bright materialists, but they don't like us because we're egalitarians. So what do we do when we find friends, possible friends out there in space? We bribe them with monies. Um, let's send them... You guys like minerals? You guys don't really like minerals all that much, but uh, I can't really blame you. Alright, confirm. Let's become friends. Let's get a commercial pact, a research agreement. I would be wonderful. I'd be very happy if we could get ourselves a non-aggression pact. Eventually we'll get that. More friends! Wonderful! More friends to come to our aid if we need it. All the alien box contents, okay. Manage to peek inside the alien box without compromising the container itself by utilizing an advanced type of sonar and able to identify its contents. The contents are puzzling, or at least unexpected. The box holds three small vials, each filled with an unknown liquid. The box is safe to open, but it will require further research to understand how. Open it. Cracking open the alien box takes eight months. Perfect. Alright, so right now these guys do have the advantage if we continue to chase them. That would bump them up to our fleet power. But I think it's time we fight and not, and not run. What the hell just happened? Oh, okay. Alright, let's see what happens. Uh, engagement rating does not look very good. Oh, they are tearing us to pieces. You guys got this. You guys got this. Don't let Papa down. They technically have more ships than me. But we've got more fleet power, which is wonderful, because most of their stuff has jumped out. Come on. Keep fighting until the bitter end. Fight till the bitter end, my Corvettes. Please. 
Fight the fleet, stop fighting the station, damn it. Okay, but at least we kind of won this one? Almost. <laughs> Still says we're not very good right now, so we'll see. They've got way, <laughs> way more ships than me. Ooh, nice. How much would it cost to reinforce the fleet now? 5960, okay. Alright, we're gonna win this one. Okay, stay here. No, stay. No, stop it. Where are you going? Stay here. Come back. Come back and heal up. Good lord. Ooh, living metal. Where are you found at? Uh, oh, of course. It's going to be in a system where we're not right next to it. Perfect. Um, okay, so now that we, we've tested their, tested their metal, tested their ability, uh, are you guys repairing over here or not? Uh, you are not. I need you to move, I need you to go in orbit of that space station, please. Can you upgrade or can you repair? They are repairing, okay. Didn't look like they were before. Uh, what's going on up here? Why we why do we have unemployed? Uh, one of those, please. And then one of those, please. Uh, yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> Modify... Whoa, okay. A long-laster scientist have penetrated the outer material of the alien box. The three small vials inside are indeed filled with different liquids. One red, one blue, and one green. The liquids are less alien than their container, and our scientists have identified them as primed gene modification mediums. For reasons beyond our understanding, the solutions are quickly deteriorating outside their alien container. Should be enough time to synthesize and apply one of them to our species. And then its effects will be positive, but exactly how remains to be seen. Hmm. Red, blue, or green? Let's take the green. What happens? The green gene modification solution has been successfully administered to the lock people. Based on preliminary observations of early subjects, the solution appears to improve our ability to adapt to our environment. Is that so? Well, would you look at that? Oh, it's plus 5%, though. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's better than nothing. That's really interesting. I don't think I've ever gotten that, that special project. That's super cool. Well, at least it makes it a little bit easier to live on other worlds. But one day we'll be robots, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> um, okay, uh, let's go ahead and buy more of our consumer goods. Let's sell off some uh, some minerals. Because we're definitely going to want to get ourselves some more alloys. And then we're going to go ahead and come down to the fleet. And then reinforce that fleet. Alright. Alright. So right now, these guys, they're mustering their strength once again. They're licking their wounds. Our ships are kind of doing the same. Um, the main problem that I foresee happening right now is they've got more ships than me right now. And their space station in this system is the same strength as this one. So, oh, but no, this one is damaged. So that one won't be like that wonderful. But the Zorakan Black Hole is quite buff, and this one is quite buff as well. So what I'm thinking is, can we do status quo? Not yet. So once we have this fleet down here um, finished up in Dal Lakur, we'll probably send that one up here to take care of all of this, and we'll continue to sit here with this fleet and uh, kind of hit these guys back. Uh, the problem is they're also going to be reinforcing, and they have a much quicker reinforcement time as they are in their home space, and they're in their home system. So they're currently sitting at 1.6k. If we go in and attack right now, we will lose outright. But now they're up to 1.9k. Wonderful. Where are you guys headed? Moving to the Colador system. So they're going to move all the way up here. Hmm. Why do we have our borders closed to these guys? They're our friends. That's a very good question, Ryan. Where are you, our friends? Uh, you, Bibaki. Uh, our borders are not closed. It just looked like they were closed for a second there. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. I'm not sure exactly what their plan is, but if they're moving up towards this system, they're giving us more time to reinforce. So whatever floats your boats there, Mandasaurans, I won't put it past you to be stupid. Alright, so yeah, this is going to take a while because we don't have multiple shipyards. 
Okay, so things have been going well. We actually have the ability to settle status quo. So once we take this system and this system, we'll be able to um, settle the war, and we will have won, which is great because then we'll be at uh, we'll be at peace technically, uh, and we'll have a truce with them for ten years. But by that point, it'll be really really nice because then they can't go to war with us, and the only other two empires in the galaxy are our friends, which means we are in a good place right now. We can get a non-aggression pact with them as soon as they are friendly with us. And they actually have another empire that's close to them that they're rivals with. Probably right here, if I had to guess. If there's a space station to bump... Nope. I don't know where it's at. Huh. I guess we'll find out. Uh, but yeah, so I haven't seen their fleet come back. Maybe they're out here just fighting these guys. I don't know what's going on over here. The AI just kind of fucked off and left, leaving me with all of this... All right, so they've got one more space station to take care of out here, and I would technically be okay with calling it a day. If we don't get this system out here, it's not that big a deal. Uh, even if we were in the middle of a fight right here, I would call status quo, and I would be completely fine with that. Because uh, we don't need all of that. These were the only systems that we really needed to get, uh, and I'm curious to see what's up here. If this uh, connects to everything up here, then that makes sense to block them off. Um, but once this is done, we'll then be able to move our choke points... Uh, we'll probably move it to Yel Bar Barasta, and then we'll move one up to here whenever we get up there finally. Uh, but let's see, continuing with all of this stuff right here, research is looking great. Uh, we're continuing to, we're actually continuing to expand a little bit. I really want to get this system with a living metal in it. I really don't want to have to go to war with these guys to get that. They've only got two planets, it looks like, or at least two systems with planets in, oh, three systems, sorry. And you know what? While we're waiting, we can actually go ahead and start to colonize this planet right here. There we go. More planets, please. And once we get this system under our control, we'll status quo and we should be good. Should be good to go now. Perfect. Let's see if status quo works the way I think it does. <laughs> I hope it does. Settle status quo. Send offer. And wonderful. Look at that. So now the galactic hierarchy is a little bit smaller. <laughs> They're a little tiny now, uh, which is quite nice. And they are still equivalent, or no, they're inferior to us. But their fleet power is still equivalent to us, but that's okay. Because they cannot expand to anywhere. Uh, and I'm curious to see where all this stuff leads. So now we can go ahead and break down this um, bastion right here. I know it's kind of a waste. And we can also break down this one right here because we don't really need that. And we can break this system down as well, because we don't need that. Um, and did we get any colonizable planets in this system? I mean, once we're robots, yes, but not at the moment. So that works for me. Uh, let's go ahead and buy a couple hundred alloys to grab ourselves some stuff to upgrade. And we should be able to take the Yelbarasta system and upgrade that to a starport. Wonderful. Our first war has been concluded. Wasn't the most action-packed war? Not, not, not one bit. Uh, but, you know, that's totally fine, because half the time you want a war that goes exactly like that. One where you don't really have to worry about too, too much. Alright. Uh, we're making decent progress with all of our research. It's the year 2240. It's only been 10 years since the beginning of the, or since the, um, beginning of the episode. That's kind of crazy. There's something with the First League right there. We need you to research that, please. Then come down here and research that, please. Thank you. All right, cool. Oh, there's another planet out here. A level uh, size 11 uh, arid world. Okay. Now, can we be friends with the state of Hyphus anymore? What? Oh, here we go. Um, so the distance is why they, they, they try not to be um, in a defensive pact with us. But once our borders get a little bit closer, like that, that will be better. And we can go there. We can go there, survey that, explore the natural wormhole, go there, go there, go there, and then come back and survey that. Make sure that's surveyed, and there we go. I didn't realize this was an arm that would just kind of end off. That's kind of cool, though. And then a construction ship, we can continue down towards this way. How much would it cost to build it outright? 105 influence? No, we don't need that just yet. If I see a construction ship pop up in this system, then maybe, but I think we'll be okay. All right, cool. First war done. Now, because we have a truce with them, our our borders are technically open, but I don't think they'll I don't think they'll they'll come into our space. I think we're gonna be just fine. 
then you guys, let's go ahead and start filling in the holes inside of our inside of our space. Gotta get all this stuff taken, all these little holes taken, all of this stuff. We're expanding quite nicely, honestly, and it's really been a great start to the game. Our economy's looking really, really tasty. Very, very good. Right there, we'll build that one next. <clears throat> the system of yump is under our control. <laughs> oh my god, this game, I love it. Alright, cool. Uh, and then we're going to keep Evagamir right here, because in the event of them expanding to there, we do indeed want to have a choke point right here. And this is just a nice defensible position. Very, very nice. Oh, who might we have here? They are Molluscoid, I believe? Oh, it's on the opposite side of the, the galaxy down there. Okay. Who do we have? And more friends, possibly? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and get those guys under our control. Uh, consumer goods production. Plus six consumer goods by the end of the month, or by the end of the term. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see, buddy. We shall see. Alright, but luckily our allies, they are they are beefed up out here. Jesus, they've got so many freaking bastions, or so many freaking uh, starports and stuff. But their technology is shit and their fleet power is shit. Hmm, Interesting. For xenophobes, you'd think that they would be a little bit more bulked up by now. Alright, there we go. Grab a few more of those. We'll have to discover what's on the opposite side of this one, too. Yeah, I'm just... I'm curious to see who's on the opposite side down here. Hmm. I'm not sure, but we shall find out. We need to continue to expand. I need that system under my control as soon as possible. And that will be our southern choke point, most likely. The Selemi Confederacy! Jesus, evangelizing zealots, xenophobic, fanatic spiritualists. The complete opposite of what we are. We are not going to be friends with you, that is for damn sure. Uh, yeah, no, we are definitely not. Declare rivalry, and uh, let's go ahead... Ooh, and they're equivalent to me, too. It's a good thing they're far away from me. Look at these assholes down here being stupid. Okay, so that's good to know. That means we have a ticket to their space all the way over here. Uh, so for future expansion, probably not a good idea to go over there. Because <laughs> uh, that one most likely leads exactly to where that wormhole was. Right either here in Erdoska or Versha. Or Vorsham, whatever it is. I suppose we'll see. It looks like we are indeed going to get this system right here, which is great. We should be able to form a defensive pact with the state eventually. Oh, no. A non-aggression pact first. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, that'll be fine. Even though they're slaving despots, we, we like to be friends with people. We are, I know we are fanatic egal or we are egalitarians, but we value money and progress over people's rights, I suppose. Holy Jesus, what's going on with all our freaking uh, unemployed up here? Let's build ourselves a robot assembly plant, energy, city district. Then, there... That's what we want right there. That's what we want right there. God, that's a bunch of unemployed. Actually, scratch that. Let's get some more alloy production going. Alloy foundries, one of you and one of you. That will work for me. And then up here, we can go ahead and grab another civilian industries. That way we can finally be positive in consumer goods and stop having to leech energy every month. That would be wonderful. Look at that. That's exactly what we wanted. And truthfully, I mean, we could take this one. Yeah, why not? A choke point with a, uh, a black hole in it is a good one, because then you've got disengagement chance, 50%, and emergency FTL cooldown, uh, 50%. So that affects both you and your enemies. Now, hopefully we don't get border friction too much from the state of Hifness, um, but we can actually go ahead and form a non-aggression pact right there. That's what we want. And then next will come the defensive pact. Now, in order to understand what else is out there in the uh, universe, let's go ahead and trade some info with you. And they'll actually take it without anything else. Perfect. So we've made contact with the United Miko Nas Block. They're xenophilic fanatic militarists, okay? So they're they're okay, actually. We would actually want to be friends with them. Uh, let's check. Uh, how are they? Do they like us? Uh, kind of. They're, they're indifferent to us. New contact, minus 20. Uh, so let's become friends with them. How far away are they? 
Oh, good lord. Okay, wait a second. So they're right there. Do they have a wormhole? They do. Out in Viet. Hmm. Okay. So whoever else is out there... But wait, who are they rivals with? Aha! So they're rivaled by the state of Hifnis because the state of Hifnis... They are authoritarian, fanatic, materialists, but that doesn't make any sense. They just must not like each other. <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll, we'll keep them at a distance for now, because they're really far away from me. So that's not that big of a deal. Alright, so more alloy production coming. Another planet on its way. Uh, once we get some excess energy, we might want to think about terraforming some planets. Well, what the hell is all this? 11.2k? Who the hell are you guys? Uh, well, that's not terrifying whatsoever. They got some crazy looking ships, though. Huh. That's kind of cool. Alright, perfect. We've got our choke point right down there. That will be wonderful. And now we can go ahead and begin to build and exploit things in space. We do have another planet to go ahead and colonize right here as well. We're going to need some more consumer goods, though. And there we go. And then we can grab this one and put it under our belt. Colonize. Boom. And a-bam. Perfect. All right, so we're really doing good on planets, honestly. We're, we're, we're actually doing really good on planets. Uh, everything else is doing really well. You can build one out there. And then you guys, uh, where's the other one? Right down here. You can build one there. The Hisma Civilization. Where are you guys at? You guys live on Alpine Worlds. That's a size 25. God dang. They are fanatic. Okay, they're spiritualist and xenophobes. Not necessarily the people that are going to be with us. Zero point power, curator speed. Yeah, let's do that. I want to make sure we get that exploration speed, that survey speed. Alright, so I wonder if the Babaki League is is kind of boxed in. Because they haven't really expanded any since we've met them. This is probably the end to that system. These two systems might be the ending as well. Not sure. Uh, and I was right. This did have branching. It, it branches off. I'm just curious to see what happens up here. I bet you this is the end of that system. Damn it, dude. We didn't even need to, we didn't even need to go to war to take all that shit. But honestly, it's nice because over time, we'll just phase the Mandasura Galactic Hierarchy out of out of existence. We'll just claim all their stuff. Uh, so we're not the most powerful empire in the galaxy at the moment. Right now, that's the Selemi uh, Confederacy. Oh, but no, we are the most powerful. It's just we're not super powerful, I should say. Okay, another one of the wormholes. This is the one with the uh, primitive civilization in it. This one leads us... Oh! That lowers the distance quite a bit. Over to our people on this side of the galaxy. Uh, that could also be somewhat problematic. Because since our friends are rivals with them, that could technically make sure that they get into our space. That's perfectly fine. Uh, because they're rivals with the state of Hifnis. Uh, and if we go, if the state of Hifnis decides to go to war and we have a defensive pact with them, chances are they're going to try and pull us into that war. Speaking of, speak of the devil, we can technically be in a defensive pact with them. Truthfully, probably what will end up having happen is we're going to make a federation with the Babaki League and the state of Hifnis most likely, and we will control practically <laughs> like a third of the galaxy if we do that. Uh, ooh! The Xanir Interstellar Autocracy. Who are you? Uh, uh, okay. So they're fanatic authoritarians and they're militarists. Wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, oh. So that's why the Babaki League has not expanded. They're kind of boxed in up there. Hmm. Interesting. How much do you hate us? Not too bad, actually. Only because we're egalitarians. Can I interest any of you in a lovely federation? <laughs> Would you lovely butterflies like to be friends? <laughs> Let's be friends. What do you what do you say? Do you like food? You gotta love food, right? Here, just take all my food. That would be wonderful. 
Yeah, be friends. Aha, uh -huh. you want a research agreement? I would love a research agreement. Anything else you want to give me? <gasps> Do you want a commercial pact? I don't know, maybe. You're happy with us, so that's perfectly fine with me. Uh, you're also equivalent with us. And you're cordial. Wonderful! We've made friends with the lovely butterflies to our northeast. <laughs> Wonderful. And luckily, they're not actually mad with the Babaki League either. Probably because the Babaki League is xenophobic, so I guess they just kind of don't give a shit about anybody. As long as they don't fucking touch them, I think they're going to be fine. Can we do a commercial pack now? Soon. Soon. <laughs> okay, so yeah, they're, they're fairly powerful compared to us as well. Now, if we, if we had a damn federation with the Babaki League, Xander Interstellar Autocracy, and the State of Hifness, we'd be pretty untouchable, which would be great. That's the goal. At the same time, though, uh, we want to make sure that we're super powerful so that we stay in charge of the Federation. But then again, Federations in the console version are not as... What's the word that I'm looking for? They're not as incredible. They're not as powerful. Sure, you can get a massive Federation fleet going with it. But at the same time, Federations on PC were just made amazing with the Federations DLC. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have access to that here on Xbox. Or on console, I should say. What are you doing down here with just one solitary Corvette? What the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> is this a is this a provocation of war? What is this one Corvette going to do anything? You freaking plants. You damn things. Alright, but this is perfect. Uh, we want to go ahead and welcome back you, because that's a pretty good leader, if I'm not mistaken. The Exile. They're level 3, and they have the Genius trait, it looks like. Yeah, Spark of Genius trait. We've also got this one. It was also a spark of genius. Overall, I'm very happy with this start. It has been pretty good, honestly. The fact that we've got the first league as our as our precursor is honestly very, very tasty. It's very good. Uh, we can go and come down here, build ourselves one there. That's a choke point there. We need a choke point upgrade here in Yelbarista, because this has been upgraded for a while. Yep, there goes all my alloys once again. These guys don't have any way over to us because over here in Gargantua, which I bet you the Infinity Machine is over here, um, but they can't get over here. Look at the name of this system. Shit. Yeah, I'm in shit. I like it. Um, yeah, a lot of small empires out here. Kind of small. Not as, not as girthy slash expansive as we are. <laughs> we like the girth. All right, but yeah, things are going really well. Our economy's looking mwah. We're finally positive consumer goods. What do you know? It only took us 46 years. Perfect. Uh, okay, we need to start thinking about space on this planet. Not to mention we need to think about upgrading these alloy mega forges. The problem is we have no moats, which means we need to have a planet with only strategic resources on it. It's funny, I brought up specializing in like the first episode. Have I specialized? Not one bit. That's probably why my economy looks the way that it does. It's kind of an all-rounder economy, if I'm honest. But we're doing really well on influence. The fact that we can still gain about 3.5 and, and still consume 2.5 every month, that's honestly really, really good. Oh, but you know what? They, I bet you they do connect. This system connects here. Hmm. Okay, that's good to know. But we're blocked off by all of this garbage up here. I mean, we could take care of all of this stuff, but this system in particular is absolutely garbage. What's in this one? Uh, more mining drones, it looks like. More research, please. Uh, tachyon sensors, please. It's finally time for us to graduate to the big boys. Uh, the other thing is, we still don't know how to exploit uh, exotic gases or crystals. How is that possible? We're almost 50 years into the game, and we still don't have that technology done? How the hell is that even a thing? Hmm. Alright, but the next one we're going to go down is indeed Diplomacy. Uh, we're going to adopt that, and then we're going to go straight to the Federation one. Because honestly, if we can get into a Federation, this is going to be wonderful. And I think that was actually one of my, my criteria for this game, was to either be in a massive Federation, pretty much federate the entire space, or the entire galaxy, or uh, to take out the uh, Endgame Crisis. I'm not exactly sure which one we'll do, but we'll see. <clears throat> How many First League artifacts do we have now? One, ooh, we're almost done. One, two, three, four, five. We need one more. That's actually really lucky because eventually 
If you sit long enough, one will pop up on one of your planets, and you won't have to go out and search for it, which is really tasty. Do we have any anomalies? Nope, there's no anomalies. Okay, so we haven't found it just yet. But we're still having our ships go out and uh, research stuff, so... I bet you it's going to be somewhere in here. Let's have them... Uh, Let's have them research all sorts of stuff in here. We'll set that up. And then, unfortunately, we are indeed at the end of today's episode right here. Now, we went from 2230 to 2246. It's interesting. We I recorded for like the same amount of time, yet we're only 16 years into the future. I guess that makes sense, though, because the first one was 2216, or 2200 to 2216. Every episode is like 16 years into the future, so eventually we'll probably want to make sure that we ex um, expand a little bit further than 16 years into the future, but we shall see. Uh, but guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I very much appreciate all of the support that's been shown here on the Stellaris uh, Console Edition playthrough. It's been a lot of fun for me to record. It's been new for me uh, having, you know, hours of footage to walk through and then cut it down to a sub-hour video. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, it's been a nice experiment, and I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. So, the Lock-In Mechanist has proven to be a pretty good vanilla empire for me. Um, but yeah, so let me know if uh, let me know what you guys would have done differently in this situation. Would you, would, have you, would you have tried to claim pretty much all of the Mandasura Galactic Hierarchy and take them out in one fell swoop? Um, would you, instead of going for a federation, instead close your borders to everybody and, you know, kind of be inward and then turn yourselves into robots and everything like that? Let me know what you guys would do. Our stopping economy here on this episode is actually really, really good. Research is looking great. Alloys could be better. Um, and then we've got a ton of stockpiled minerals, and energy income is great. So guys, thank you so, so much for watching. And until next time, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.